Hi everyone, welcome back. Again, this is Ryan Love with Unified Fire bringing you week five of Recruit Camp with Class 53. This week's all about firefighter survival, specifically Maydays. A Mayday is an emergency procedure word used internationally as a distress signal in voice procedure radio communications. It's used to signal a life-threatening emergency primarily by aviators, mariners, fire, and police alike. There's a lot more to calling a fire ground mayday than just picking up the radio and calling for help. It requires knowing when to call, what information to provide when you make that call, and then also what to do after you make that call. Calling a mayday is probably the one fire ground skill that every firefighter in every department must do or perform perfectly 100% of the time because our lives depend on it. That said, many firefighters are unsure of how to properly call a mayday because realistically, we only have to do it uh, once or twice in our careers, if at all. So this week's all about repetitions, getting it right. So that way when we do have to make that call, if we do, we can do it correctly, essentially because like I said, our life depends on it. So repetitions and firefighter survival this week, got great footage for you. Stay tuned, let's take a look. And then go ahead and clip in. You came in from the Charlie side of this structure on a hose line in the basement. It was a walkout basement. You guys made entry through the walkout basement. You're now on the first floor where, yes, where you guys were standing as the alpha side. So you came in from the Charlie side on the hose line, okay? Yes, ma'am. You've gone off the hose line. It's in the room that you're currently in, but you've lost it. Yes, ma'am. Okay? So you're disoriented. What are you going to do when you're disoriented? Call me in, ma'am. Okay. So let's start with that. What's your plan? You're trying to get out, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're going to try to phone the hose line and follow it back after the engine. Okay. Okay. Yes, hey, Sean Garrett here with Class 53. Uh, today we're doing a whole bunch of cool stuff. Uh, we got crews working in the confined space trailer. Uh, big emphasis today on maydays and uh, firefighter emergencies. So in this this particular drill, we have firefighters enter in. They're alone. They're disoriented, and and they have to call an initial mayday, letting the crews on the exterior know that they are lost, disoriented, and that they're going to try to find their way out of the building on a on a hose line. As they're following the hose line, they're going to transition from this main floor into the basement, and we have some cadre members and some debris and we simulate a ceiling collapse on top of them and we trap them. And then at that point in time, they have to keep their wits about themselves, uh, call another mayday and update uh, the exterior crews and interior crews of their change in condition. And then we start working through certain air emergency situations. So what would happen if they had uh, a, a pack failure or they have a, an interruption of air to their mask? So. Super stressful for them. They have to work through the panic, figure out they, they gotta be really familiar with their equipment, their base piece, their bypass, all the regulators, uh, the remote pressure gauge, how to activate their pass device, which is just a, a really loud alerting system. To, uh, it's just super obnoxious and it, and it gives crews that are looking for a down firefighter, you know, a path of where they need to go. Uh, Levi Cronus, for one of the new recruits for Camp 5-3. Uh, today we're going through the drill. Uh, Mask on, on air, blacked out, uh, following a hose line, trying to find my way back out. And uh, during the drill, we had a collapse stage that collapses onto you. And uh, minimal, mo you can't really move at all in there. And uh, the first time I went through it, uh, it collapsed onto me. I forgot about my tool, couldn't get it back up and felt trapped. And uh, as the air turns off, it sucks to your face and you start to suffocate. 
and I try to do the motions as uh, like in our training, go back to the regulator and turn it back on. But uh, the longer you take, the more you can't breathe. And as time went on, I uh, just started freaking out and I sort of lost the training and just panicked and I uh, basically just to keep your cool, resort back to training and get reps in, I think is the biggest thing. This right here, because I'd rather you do that right here with us here than you do it in a fire, okay? Yes, sir. Breathe for a second. Okay, you like it now? Yes, sir. Okay, what's next? I'm going to deploy my rope. What is that going to <clears throat> To the ground. Okay, we're going to clear the window of all this, right? To know what the distance uh, we have out to make sure if it hits the ground or how much more you got to go from there. Yes, but it also gets everything out of your way and doesn't get tangled up inside the building. Okay, let it go. Rope! Okay, you're down. Okay, where you go, let's get your safety on. Belay on. Set. Okay, safety's on. Safety ready. Okay, get that up to where you need it. You need all that gear to clear that seal so it doesn't get caught on anything. Get low, <laughs> straddle the window, get your arm down. Both arm down and leg. Slowly get yourself out. Use that arm. Hold yourself out. Okay. Let it set. Okay. Grab your hill. Okay. Get your legs back. Get your legs back. Get your hand away from that and walk yourself down. Good. On the ground. On the ground. So today we're teaching our recruits. Um, how to bail out of a window, something that we definitely hope that we never have to do. So today we have uh, Captain Dinkle right now has been showing the recruits um, just a different setup to use. So he's using a Munter hitch and a couple carabiners. We're setting an anchor point at the top. We've got them on a safety belay, just making sure we're safe today. Um, a lot of them are, this is the first time they've done anything like this. Like we have people that are climbers that may have a little bit of familiarization with um, ropes, knots, and everything, but definitely something new that these guys are learning today. So this is unfortunately a reality um, for firefighters, something that we hope we don't have to do, but it's we still train, train for um, worst case scenario. So if we have to leave a window, um, finding the anchor point, um, getting ourselves clear of the window, clearing the glass, and then getting out and lowering ourselves safely to the ground. Um, so several guys in the department have um, different systems that they use. I personally have a bailout system that is designed by Petzl. It was designed, um, FDNY, after Black Sunday, um, reached out to Petzl about designing um, a bailout device for their firefighters. Um, and that's what they came up with. So this is my device. Um, I keep this, it's typically in my right pant turnout pocket um, and I have it hooked to me at all times. So this part stays attached to the harness that's integrated in my turnouts. Um, and then this is the beaner that I would use as my anchor. So it's always attached, it's ready to go. All I have to do is either find or create an anchor point in the room that we're in. All right. So Ryan Jensen here again, uh, part of the Cadre Class 53. Today we went over search and rescue, victim removal, and firefighter survival. So as you can see, right now we're practicing the firefighter survival. We're practicing carrying out one of our own. Uh, it's a real possibility where the rescuers for 
our victims and as well as for our own firefighters if they ever go down. We never want that, so we teach how to avoid those situations, but unfortunately they're just uh, the things that we just can't avoid sometimes, and so that happens. Teaching them how which ways are kind of easier to carry. It's not easy no matter what we do, but there are better ways to go about it to not harm ourselves. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're working on stairs right now. Um, different ways to use their webbing, uh, different holds on their SCBA packs to hold. If they can carry a firefighter out, they can carry a victim out. So it's basically why we're starting here. Go in, let's get a radio check from you as you go in. Give each other a little room so we're not getting feedback with that radio check. Make sure radios are turned down for Stormsdorfer and Cronus. Mott, make sure your radio is turned up so you can hear me talking to you. Okay, and so Hygon also, what's the overall assignment? What, what's, the, what's the goal here? So our goal is going to be to find the message on the cones inside while staying um, in contact with our anchor person and on systematically the, searching the On the left-hand search, right? On the left-hand search. I need to let you know that. We're going in on the left-hand search, right? Stop, stop yes, sir. Right okay. Yeah. All right, you guys are good to go in. And uh, give me that radio check as you go in. Just give each other a few feet of space so we don't get feedback. So, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Now you guys can slip in. My name is Ryan Hygon and I'm a recruit with Class 53 and right now we are practicing uh, search drill in our search prop here and uh, we've got a fog machine or a theater smoke machine going to where our recruits inside can't see their hand in front of their face is completely uh, blacked out inside and what we're practicing doing is communication for the recruits inside and for me outside standing in as the uh, captain role uh, my job is to facilitate that radio communication and receive any messages they're sending from inside the search prop here. Go ahead, 191 Charlie. Message, not a drop to drink. 191 Charlie, I copy, not a drop. Can you repeat the second half of the message? Uh, with our messaging, I was um, mirroring back to our uh, firefighters inside so that I was able to make sure I received the message clearly. Uh, I took a couple of times based on the radio communications to make sure I received proper communications, making a closed loop uh, communication when I spoke with them. I'm going to ask our uh, crew in here, they've been working for about 10 minutes now and uh, I've got a little bit more capacity out here to ask them how they're doing. I'm gonna ask for a CAN report where I get the conditions, the actions that they're taking, their air, have the lowest air level of a person on their team in there, as well as any needs that they may have. On search team, this is 191 Alpha requesting a CAN report. Go ahead, 191 Charlie. Conditions are heavy smoke, no heat, we're at 2500, no needs at this time, continuing left hand search. Hey Chad Pate with Class 53, we're out here today doing search drills. Uh, we've oriented them to the gear that we need to use, but we're also teaching them what they need to do as they're entering a structure. Right now we've got one crew doing a left-hand search, next crew is doing a right-hand search. I'm searching for victims in large areas, small areas, including bedrooms. We're working on anchoring in, making sure we have an oriented man, and ones that are diving into the bedroom making those searches. Hey, what did I do different there, guys? No good to make sure we're all there at all times. You were louder, more audible. How fast was it? Very fast, sir. Systematic? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got control in one room, I got you anchoring. Dude, that's, we're five-handed, that's awesome. That's huge, okay? That way I can split and move back and forth and I can tie in with whoever's at the front of the door, make sure that you're good to go. And I tied in with you at the other door to make sure you were good to go. Yes, sir. And then I leapfrog you, okay? But as we're moving, guys, you need to be paying attention to your senses. Use your hands, be careful with your tools, okay? Sweep with your tools. I'm sounding, I'm leading it out, okay? That's how we should do things. That's a more systematic approach to it, and that's how you can get shit done fast, okay? Yes, yes, and through sections, and we're treating it space to space, right? 
Yes, sir. Um, so that's why we have the sounder in the front. He's sounding the ground to make sure the ground is solid underneath of us, make sure the ground is still there at all. And then we're all holding onto that left wall. That's why we're all on the same path. We hold onto the back of each other as well. Um, and we just have to keep that clear communication. That's why in the very first time when we weren't doing the communication as well, we were getting a little bit more separated. And then the second time around when Specialist Garrett was there, he was making sure we were talking back to him and he knew we were right there where he was wanting us at the moment um, because you cannot see that well. Um, when you're standing up straight, you cannot see your feet. So we have to stay low to the ground so we can get as much visibility as possible and try to stay out of the heat as well. It's cool just seeing how simple a lot of the things are too. The stuff that we try to reach out and tell the public, staying low in smoke, closing bedroom doors, like they make a huge difference. Even for us going through structures, the lower we are, the better our visibility is. And even though visibility isn't great in there, we can rely on our other senses to kind of carry us past maybe not having that great of visibility. Like Niles was saying, just communicating a lot, making sure we're in physical contact with each other. Yeah, we gotta do it. No, we gotta do it. Um, gotta coordinate it like tactfully and efficiently like like not like making sure that we know like hey you're gonna split off here you're gonna split off there quick let's do it and then if i find something or someone communicate it the biggest thing that i've noticed uh, in these first six weeks with recruits is the communication piece because there's still like a lot of like what the hell is going on can i say this can i do this whatever else um when we get after this in evolutions, I need you guys to be who you want to be. Be who you need to be. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, if you're in charge, be in charge. Yes, sir. Cool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're not in charge and you have ideas, share them, but follow orders. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're seeing something, call it out. If you're feeling something, call it out. Relay it. Make sure that that message has been received. Search is a huge priority, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It needs to be fast? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it needs to be systematic. How easy is it to get disoriented in this space? Easy. Easy. How much square feet is that? Not very much, much, sir. No. Okay. You see how when I took you guys in, and I'm playing a role that you guys are un, you're unsure whether or not you can be that person. You guys want to be firefighters? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a recruit camp, to, a recruit camp to train firefighters. So when we're doing firefighter things on the evolution ground, be the firefighter you need to be. Use your big boy or big girl voice. Okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Who was the last group that went in with me? Yeah, when I need to, sir. I'm right? Ready. And we used dad or occupant as a source of information. Who was missing? My son. Great. Where's his bedroom at? His third bedroom on the left, main floor. Is that the last place you saw him? No, he was actually watching TV in this room. Okay? I got split priorities. I know I've got myself and, two, and four other firefighters. I can use the hallway as my oriented position and I can split you guys. Because I can't duplicate efforts because search needs to be fast. If I send another crew in there and they do everything that you just did, that's taking too much time. Understood? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Mayday, mayday, mayday. 194 Delta. I'm disoriented. I'm lost. I don't have my hose line. I'm at 3,800 PSI. I look for a way out. I'm exhausted. I need somebody to come get me. Welcome back to Recruit Camp. We are uh, in the afternoon session of this, kind of a search and rescue day. We're going to be simulating here in our confined space prop. Basically, a lost and downed firefighter. The firefighter will be lost, he will be unconscious. However, his pass device, which is the alarm on his pack that will be going off, will be sounded. Their task will be, as a company, to make entry down here into the confined space um, maze and they're going to be using all their senses being touch, hearing, looking, listening um, for where that sound is coming from. They're going to make their way through um, a multitude of obstacles in here and then try to find that down firefighter. Once they get that down firefighter, which will be basically right here in this black tube, um, their, their task is then to get that firefighter out and bring them out to fresh air, out to safety. I am going to be playing the role of the downed firefighter. So I'll be up there um, once they get into that tube and they, they find me. If they're not doing the correct things that need to be done, I will help and coach them through as needed um, to get me out um, for two reasons. Obviously so that they're doing it the right way and they don't hurt me. And it always helps to have headphones in there 
while you're listening to that beepy device. The object of this drill is there a down firefighter inside. He doesn't know where he's at. He, it sounds like he might even be unconscious. Doesn't, he said he's not, he doesn't even know if he's on a hose line is the last we heard, okay? Mm -hmm. So I need you to go in. I'm gonna show you where to enter. And I need you to go in as a, a company and you need to bring him out. Yeah, let's go. Okay, same plan as we talked about. I haven't seen here. You're gonna enter right here. Up here. That's the last time we saw him. Okay, so you're going to be good. Pace, he was a company officer. Last round spot, he took a left, or a hard left right here. That's the last time we yes, saw him. Yes. What's up, everybody? Nick Lund here. And this morning we had a test, and then we went into salvage and overhaul lecture. Um, overhaul is something that we do after we have the initial fire knockdown and we make sure that it's extinguished and hasn't extended into any other areas of the structure that we're extinguishing. After the lecture, we have them out here and we're doing um, the salvage part of it, having them throw tarps and teaching them how to make a shoot out of a tarp and a catch all. And then this evening, we're going to take them up to the burn prop and have them do some live burns, making sure that they're overhauling after they extinguish it. And then we're having them do some salvage downstairs on any furniture or anything down there. Uh, today, uh, we started our salvage and overhaul piece. Uh, we had an interview earlier from uh, Specialist Lawn talking about um, just kind of how we overhaul on these structures. This afternoon, what we've done is we've set up some fires in the second story um, of the tuna can here. And so what we've done is we've set some fires up there in one of the bedrooms. Uh, we're having them fire attack uh, from the, the main level here. They're gonna go through the first floor up to the second. They're gonna get to the fire. They're gonna extinguish the fire and they're gonna go in as a four person company. Two folks are going to do fire attack. The other two folks are going to do some search inside the building and making sure there's no occupants inside. After they get done with that, they put the fire out. They're going to go through the overhaul piece by removing all of the burning pallets and everything that's in there so that we can get rid of the, the smoke and the fire and all the stuff that's going to cause us uh, problems. And then the other two are going to continue that search and we've set up down here on the main floor, we've set up a living room. They're gonna come out, they're gonna grab some salvage covers, and then they're going to cover the uh, furniture items up in that home, trying to protect those items from from the, all the water and the smoke and everything that's gonna be inside the structure. Um, we're trying to emphasize um, really heavily in here how important salvage and overhaul are um, to protect uh, folks and uh, people's property moving forward. Hi, my name is Micah Stratton. I'm an adjunct instructor here with Camp 53. And today we have our recruits learning about our pro packs. Um, as you can see with this blanket of foam we have out here, they've been familiarizing themselves with the uh, pro pack foam dispensing system. And we have them learning it because that's our primary way uh, out in the field and operations for distributing foam on uh, anything from like a dumpster fire, car fire, uh, vapor suppression, um, or just any sort of like mop up, whether it's grass fire or house fire. And uh, this is something that the recruits uh, are really getting used to as we move along through camp. Um, a, kind of a part of the day in the morning is a, a new skill or a new piece of equipment that they're learning to use. And as our evolutions and live burns continue on from there, they are then expected to use those tools appropriately. So today, some familiarization with their foam distribution, and we'll look to move into doing some live dumpster burns here in the afternoon. Engine 193 Red, respond dumpster fire, 8060 West. 3950 South, engine 193 Red, respond dumpster fire, 8060 West, 3950 South. Today we have our new recruits out, starting a new evolution where they're introduced to the pump, starting it, engaging it in pump, flowing water, and attacking a small hazard like a dumpster fire.
another one. There's still another one. So we've been working on air management a little bit. We kind of worked on that a little bit yesterday, right? Just going through the buildings and even just with the sayings you had to retrieve and find, it, it took a lot of air. So we're gonna work on a little air management again today in the form of a little game we've come up with that incorporates a little exercise. Um, we're gonna work all the way down to your ringing bell. When your bell rings, you're out of the game. So the team here on the right, you're a team. And the team here on the left, you're a team. The game is dodgeball, okay? If you get out, you have to go out and complete one of the exercises out here, and we'll show those to you in a second. And then you, come, you can come back in. Okay, so we're gonna tire hit, and you're gonna bring your legs in for 10. And then you're gonna go do 10 medicine ball squats. And you can come back in. All right. Once you ring, you can lay down outside. You're going to have to lay down outside until somebody's out. So just lay down out here in the area, get in the recovery position, try to conserve your air. All right, and that wraps up week five out here in Magna, Utah with class 53. Thanks so much for watching the video up until this point. Uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and click that like button below. Also, feel free to subscribe to our channel in doing so. You'll receive notifications on when we drop those videos. We plan on dropping them on a weekly basis until we conclude this camp. Uh, we've got about uh, 11 more videos left, so stay tuned. Click that subscribe button, and we'll see you next week. Again, this is Ryan Love with Unified Fire.